Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Now welcome to part two of my Cacti and Succulents, or our Cacti and Succulents, Polytunnel Collection. And if you haven't done already, please do watch part one. This is part two, and I'll put links up to part one in this video. So do, um, do check that, links will be up above. So check that too. So this is part two. And as I say in part one, I covered all of this side of the polytunnel. And part two, I'm gonna be covering all this side of the polytunnel. So here we go, guys. And on this side, I have a lot of our succulents, little cacti and succulents, um, seedlings, I should say. But actually, these are, all, these are all actually cacti seedlings. And we have some of our seedlings actually in the house as well. So stay tuned for a indoor cacti and succulent and a houseplant update coming up probably in the next few days. This is the polytunnel one. But we, these are more the seedlings that are a little bit more mature that can overwinter outside here in our polytunnel. And we've got a mixture of everything. We've got um, no to cactus, we've got mammillaria, um, trichocereus, a puncture. As you can see, these are pretty shriveled, they're going to need a good water, but I won't be watering anything now in this polytunnel, probably until March, April time. So, shrinking won't hurt them because they're cacti and does them good, especially with the punctures. That's what they normally do in their natural habitats. And lots of different types of a puncture seedlings here, as you can see. These little Mammillaria spinosima seedlings, aren't they just adorable, guys? These are going to all be potting up individually into little individual pots in the springtime. And here I have Libivia seedlings um, here. And here we have Coripanther seedlings as well, all going to be potted up into their own little individual pots in the spring. Here I have little Cleister cacti um, seedlings aren't they just gorgeous guys and these are all going to be potted up also into their individual pots in the spring so stay tuned for lots of potting up seedling videos coming up probably from April time onwards and then here I have some of my succulents on this wall here a mixture of um, echeverias as you can see graptopotalums and um, everything in this basket it's a bit of a mess at the moment it does need a bit of a pruning back in the spring but that's a lot of them all here this again is my um, echeveria metallica which i absolutely love lovely color to it some more little echeverias there little young ones and then i have some aloes i've got my one of my aloes here i've got the majority of my aloes all at the back as well that i covered in yes in the, yesterday's video part one and some more aloes here again aloe juvena that one is this is one of my calanchoes um comment the name at the top of my head i think it's fence fence bill fell dispiana and um, this one is also one of the um, linked to the mother of thousands variety it's a bryophyllum and it also has little babies on the edges when the leaves get damaged so um that is also um one of the ones that has plenty of babies and this is one of my calanchoe tubifloras that has the lovely little babies also on the edges i've got some more over there um, that I included in yesterday's video as well. Uh, so succulents on there. And then I'm going to show you the um, hanging baskets after. And here we have a mixture. This is all the cacti on here. A mixture of everything from ferro cacti. Um, majority all ferro cactus on there. Um, lovely big red spines on this one here. And um, lovely. I put, with the shelves at the back, it's good to put the, what the plants, the cacti that really stand out, I always think, and have some mammillaries all on this side. But here we have a mixture of thello cactus, mammillaria, gymnocalycium, all sort of, I like to group the majority of the cacti all together um, because it looks more aesthetically pleasing, I think, and it's nice when people come and, and view, they can see all the plants all in one place. And uh, to show you here, as I say, this is the time of year, all the cacti are dormant. I won't be watering any of these now until possibly late March, possibly even April, depending on how, how the weather warms up for the spring. But uh, gymnocalycium's all here. So everything's overwintering pretty nice and uh, everything's looking good. No signs of any pests or damage or anything like that. So very happy there. And then I have um, my Mammillaria, one of the Mammillaria spinosia and picos with the lovely white spines there. And have a mixture at the back, some more little mammillarias of different different types and varieties there. Another mammillaria. This is mammillaria. Um, I can never remember. They have to write everything. Mammillaria formosa. I always love this one because I just love the, the wooliness about it. <laughs> and here, another one as well. Some more. Um, just, it would just take me too long to mention all of the names. I'd have to get all the labels out because it's hard to remember every single name. But this is basically all of the, the majority of the, the mammillarias that we have here in the collection on this side. 
and then we have some more also um, different types of mammillarias as you can see this is the mammillaria red-headed Irish man because of its lovely red spines mammillaria spinosima another one as well this one is Hans's he brought over from Sweden this one's mine isn't it cute They're cute together and then we have a mixture here of lobivias and red bouchers. and again keep them all pretty much because all pretty similar in how they grow there lovely lovely little miniature versions with the multi heads on absolutely wonderful and then at the back here I have my Rebucha uh, Rebucha perplexa. It's perplexa has absolutely gorgeous pink flowers on it all in the spring I'm hoping it didn't flower last year which I was a bit disappointed about it, sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't not sure why but hopefully it will flower again for me this year a more mixture of Rebuchas all there all different varieties and here I have my Camacerius a different varieties again a huge huge range of different types of Camelobivia Camacerius um, all different types of colouring flowering ones here and uh, they're commonly known these Camelobivias are commonly known as the peanut cacti because of their resemblance to sort of little peanuts how they sort of grow as you can see with their little their little segments and there's lots of different varieties here this particular one I've had one of the first ones I ever had in my collection um, when I was a child so this one is whew, I have to think how now um, about 35 years old it's a long time anyway and uh, all these different types here and uh, this one here is quite this is is a link to the, the Kleister cactus family and it is a, a more Moritzia sericata sericata is it yeah uh, sericata Sericata, yes, and this is one that Hans brought over from Sweden as well. Lovely, unusual cactus here. These Echinocereus, is all here, different types of them. More Echinocereus there, and uh, all the Echinocereus varieties, all here. And then this is Nota cactus, also different types all here and we have some a mixture of everything really on here I've got some Prodia and Nota cactus um, here again is an, another Echinocereus another this is Othello cactus it's more of a Othello cacti and some of our um, commonly known as the old man cacti that this, this is a Cephalocereus sinalis I nickname it Einstein because <laughs> of its lovely woolly hair Abs I've had this plant for absolutely years I would say 20, 25 years and it is very slow growing but when I got it it was about that height so it has grown sort of a lot but still very slow growing and this one here is one of the Espostoas here as well it's lovely sort of wooliness on it almost reminds me of candy floss the way it grows <laughs> and uh, here is um, my um, Parodia magnifica cactus also known as Nota cactus magnificus absolutely this is a very very old plant as well and this is Hans's too also he's had his for many many years and this is also another one I've had as well for a very long time also on there it's actually um, it was actually started to come into bud believe it or not but the buds obviously come off um, that's not going to flower now at this time of year and here we have all the echinopsises here another echinopsis which I'm going to show you all the echinopsis all over there and this is another note of cactus this is a astrophytum what an absolute beauty isn't it look at the spines on that guys some echinopsises and um, ario uh, so astrophytum here more little astrophytums all different types of varieties some of the miniatures and um, also there's some little echinopsises also there too I'm going to show you these big tall ones in a minute and another astrophytum, it's astrophytum uh, nudum, myriostigma and um, this one here is euphorbia, it's euphorbia horrida as well and that's one of the only euphorbia that we have in our polytunnel because they're not cold hardy but this particular euphorbia is a lot more cold hardy as long as it's kept above 5 celsius 41 degree fahrenheit which our polytunnel always is and then here we have the commonly seen golden barrel cactus, um, Echino, Echino, Echinocactus grusonii. And we have quite a few different types in our collection here. Some of the white spined ones, the shorter white spined ones. These are all Echinocactus here. This is Echinocactus nudum as well. And this is another white spined variety. And then here we have an, some more astrophytums. That's our Astrophytum ornatum. I've had that plant for about 25 years as well and this one here astrophytum um, 
What's this Astrophytum um, Capricorn that I've also had for the same time? It's, it's more of a slower growing one. The Ornatum is a much faster growing one. This one is another Echinopsis here. Other Echinopsis there and all our other Echinopsises. We have quite a large variety of Echinopsis here. These are these little Echinopsis subdenudata seedlings from Hans's plant. And these are little seedlings. Aren't they gorgeous? They even grow in the little, little spots on commonly known as the sea urchin cacti I say many 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 different types again we have a few first we have got cacti coming into bud in January guys but uh, the, the buds will fall off we and that's mainly because it's the wrong time of year sometimes it, it would just happen but we keep all the cacti dry and that sometimes makes the flowers drop off but I can tell you now if we were to water any of these plants at this time of year they'd be doomed to rot so I'd rather not have flowers and have plants that survive and they should rebloom again in the spring when they're normal growing period and here we have a mixture of all the um commonly called as the tephro cacti um parthia puncher family tephro cacti cylindro punctures um here it's absolutely lovely with the, the sort of papery spines here a mixture of a few different types and other tephro cacti here and uh, these we sort of keep at the back of the polytunnel all different varieties here so um, as I say pretty much all dormant at this time of year now and then we have our punctures at the very back wall here and these are the the cacti that people either love or hate it's the, I always call them the marmites of the cactus world you either love them or hate them personally me and Hans love them and we have a selection of lots of different types of punctures as I say the tephro cacti and the Austrocylindra punctures and all that are all part of the puncture group um, but because of the shape of these they're more taller growing we keep these on this side then we have more of the traditionally seen punctures nicknamed the prickly pears on the back wall we have a mixture of everything lots of different different types all there and as I say they're all overwintering at the moment and it's perfectly normal to have them shrivel as you can see here um, with the punctures as I showed you earlier with, the, with our puncture seedlings that's how they go and that's how they go in the natural habitats it's a good sign they're using up their water reserves and they can resist cold a lot more that way also um, more puncture but they're going to puncture cristata and uh, Lots and lots of different ones, got the micro daisies there, a few different types, the white spotted one, the, the, the um, gold spotted one. This one here is one I've had for extremely long time, this, this a puncher, this is a puncher, a puncher, um, I have got it wrote down, I can't remember now. Let me just check the label. Um, that's the, the, whoops, a puncher... Orbi, orbiculata, yeah, a puncher orbiculata. Oh dear, all these names. And uh, that is one I've had a very long time. I'm going to actually go through all my collection and make sure I label everything. It's much easier when I'm doing my updates to be able to tell you all the names. That's going to be another video. <laughs> and then all different types here. And uh, you can see these ones here is the Puncture Minima. This, this particular, um, the Puncture Microdaces Minima, I have had... Um, for an extremely long time again I've had this for about 35 years one of the very first plants I ever got and I've sort of separated it into into different types of pots there it's very 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 special to me I have to say and this one here is Ostro Cylindra Persalmiana and uh, this is Hans's plant that he brought over from Sweden it was one plant we had to cut it back to move and we took we put it all up as cuttings and it has lovely white beautiful little flowers on it hasn't flowered for Hans since he moved over to Ireland so hopefully this year it will do but it's overwintering pretty much at the, at the moment it's quite unusual how it grows I love it I have to say very wacky and uh, here underneath then we have um, lots more overwinter some agaves just overwintering under the table some more punctures um, these are puncture burger bugariana I think they are what a name very lethal and then I have my big, um, a lot of crassula basket there that I've got, got them all together. I'm going to be repotting all this in the spring. I might even do it sort of in the next month or two when the weather gets a little bit better. I'm going to make a nice little bowl garden arrangement with this. So stay tuned when I do that for video. And then here we have my um, Trachocerius, um, yeah, Trachocerius scopolicola on there. And that's uh, got a little pup starting to come out on it there. It got attacked, I think, by... Um, mealybug at one time we managed to treat it back and it's starting to reshoot and here i've got my kleist one of my kleister cacti here absolutely wonderful and here i have a 
Patricevius pringlii and I will have to separate these two at some point I'm just not looking forward to having to do that because it's not going to be the most easiest of videos to do and uh, and certainly not the easiest to pot but I'll have to film it when I do because it's going to be very amusing here's some more little um, plants in between there, canopsises another scopacola, trichocera scopacola there another one as well also all happily sort of overwintering and uh, this underneath the table here I have my um, my big epiphyllum acamanii as well sort of overwintering there so um, that's doing pretty much okay that usually starts to form flower buds sort of from April onwards and then I put this out into the yard for the spring and summer where it gets seems to like plenty of rain and fresh air and this is my very tall Patricerius pringlii guys this is actually f over five feet high and I'll just show you I'm gonna stand next to it I'm five foot so it's actually taller than me now so it must be five foot two five foot three this isn't it incredible guys I've had this for an extremely long time I love this plant it is huge it's the nearest thing I've got to um, a large sort of saguaro type of cactus and I, I have got saguaro seedlings and I have a little saguaro I'm overwintering in my grow room but this is a uh, is the Patricerus pinglii which is sort of similar in appearance in in how it looks <laughs> so that's that so I've done this side here now I'm going to go and show you what we've got and uh, I say it included all the other epiphyte hanging baskets in yesterday's video part one and we have here my um, Slumbergera Buckleyi commonly known as the true Christmas cactus of three different might be three or possibly four different varieties in here um, got pink flowering and red flowering all in bud so very very happy to see that's going to be blooming beautiful when um, when it blooms so that hopefully should be in the next few weeks. As I say, normally slumbered year are commonly known as Christmas and Thanksgiving cacti. Usually do flower sort of anything from October to the January time. But I've had the ones in our house over sort of flowering already. Um, although they are coming back into bud again but these is kept much cooler in the polytunnel so that's why they, they take longer to flower than they would normally because of the temperature and this is my slumbergia one of my slumbergia truncatas i've got three different varieties in here um got pink flowering i've got red flowering that's all the pink one and i've got my lovely gold charm as well which is coming into bud which i'm very excited about there gold charm slumbergia it's beautiful flowers and uh, so as i say i did do a slumbergia um Christmas and Thanksgiving cactus update only the other day so do check that out if you haven't seen that one of my um, epiphyllums there absolutely love this plant it grows on a lovely vine isn't it just gorgeous it has lovely big magnificent white flowers on it but I'm not exactly sure the exact variety of epiphyllum that this is I have a few different types of epiphyllums as well and most of them I know the names of um, absolutely wonderful but this one is one i got as a cutting from my friend but it has some magnificent white flowers when it, when it flowers and here's one of my other slumbergia truncatas as well three different types in there as well pink coming into flower on there and this one's just starting to come into form little tiny flower buds as well I think i've got white i'm not quite sure i've got white pink and i think there's orange also as well in there but that's not showing any signs of buds yet it may not flower this year now but only time will tell and that's pretty much it guys and then i'll just show you here this is one of my other zigzag um, cacti this is called um this is epiphyllum anthonianus extreme and this is what has the big bright um sort of pink flowers on it and it's never flowered for me but i'm looking forward to when it does this is my other epiphyllum zigzag that has the big white flowers on it and i included that in part one so do check that out and then this one as you can see they look they often get confused for each other but they are different you can see that the leaf variation on this is more zagged um, more like a seesaw of appearance and with the other one it's more um, rounded as you can see there but they are very similar when they're not in flower and this one is my seed um, um, burritos tail morgianum and uh, that is sort of growing pretty well and that's pretty much it back to the seedlings again so guys um, I hope you enjoyed the complete update part one and part two of um, Ben Hansi's cacti and succulent uh, polytunnel collection and as I say stay tuned for my indoor cacti and succulent and uh, houseplant collection coming up in the next few days and if you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti and succulents please do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com and don't forget to click that notification bell and also please subscribe if you haven't done already and thank you all so much for your amazing support guys and now it's sort of mid-January not too long before spring will be here 
Yee and then if you live in Australia, New Zealand and places like that, well, you know, you always get the good weather anyway, all the time. <laughs> Look at you, Rot. So um, thank you all so much for your support, guys. It really does mean a lot. And uh, I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Happy growing, y'all.